Just look at that adorable little ball of fluff with his four legs, his snout and his little pointy tail. You could be forgiven for thinking this is a wolf cub. But look again, because this is a puppy. The resemblance is certainly striking, and to understand why, we need to take a trip back in history. As hunter-gatherers, early man shared the same hunting grounds with wolves. Whether wolf cubs were adopted by men, or whether wolves voluntarily drew closer to humans for sustenance, over time certain wolves evolved into dogs. The domestication of dogs began some 15,000 years ago. Today's Dachshunds, Spaniels or Labradors may not look much like wolves and yet in all cases the wolf is their common ancestor. Over the centuries various breeds of dogs emerged. These included hunting or working dogs, family pets or coursing hounds and all differed according to the activity they shared with man whether in the countryside, in the towns, or up in the mountains. This huge diversity of breeds, characteristics, and behavioral features should all be taken into account when choosing a puppy. Broadly speaking, as a species, dog breeds can be broken down according to their original purpose, such as shepherd dogs, terriers, pointers, coursing hounds, or pets. Originally, virtually all dogs were hunting dogs, this might come as some surprise when we look at today's Poodles or Yorkshire Terriers walking down the street. Would you believe though that the Poodle gets its name from the duck, which it hunted so admirably in times gone by, while for its part the Yorkie was the valuable partner of many a Yorkshire poacher? As man developed and evolved, so did his dogs. The dogs learned to guard flocks and to protect them from predators. In a supreme twist of fate, dogs are today used to ward off their ancestor, the wolf. But before developing its capacities, a puppy needs to grow, to gain in strength and to cut its teeth. Puppies are born in litters, with the number of pups born in each round varying according to the breed. Although a small bitch may produce between two and four pups, a large bitch can carry up to twelve. During the first fourteen days of his life, the puppy is very dependent upon his mother. Luckily, his mother is always on hand to take care of him. She keeps him warm, licks him clean, carries him around, makes sounds to help him develop his hearing, and teaches him to communicate. She also helps him with his most basic bodily needs, as the young puppy is still unable to manage unaided. At this stage, the young puppy is still very limited in the range of things that he can do. He sleeps for around 90% of his time, and drinks his mother's milk around 20 times a day. The bitch is generous when it comes to nourishing her offspring. During the six-week lactation period, she can produce more than twice her own weight in milk. At between two and three weeks of age, the puppy starts to wake up, his eyes open, and his senses begin to operate. He sleeps less now, and at around three weeks old, he begins lapping. This is the moment to offer him something other than his mother's milk. Between the first and second month of his life, the puppy begins to socialize. His senses are now keener. He is developing a sense of independence and a curiosity for the world around him. This is a very important time for him and for his future as it is now that he's developing his behavior patterns with the other dogs, with other species and above all with man. The puppy's growth is a crucial phase both physiologically and in terms of behavior. It is during these first few months that the puppy gains the basics of a good education. While he is growing, the puppy is bursting with energy and curiosity. He explores new places, plays with the rest of the litter, learns a great deal from his mother and also from his master. His first activities are among the most fundamental in his life. He learns that he mustn't soil his basket and that he mustn't bite too hard. 
he discovers that certain interactions have a social purpose. Growling and barking are a means of warning, playing or expressing a need such as hunger. Putting his paw on the head of another puppy is a way of showing who's the boss around here. And if he wants to make peace with him, he needs to lick his chops. He begins to analyze the scents of other creatures, which tell him a great deal about the species and the sex of the animals. Through these first contacts and interactions, the young pup becomes part of a community, a community in which he will learn to find his place and to abide by its rules. To begin with, he is essentially immunized by his mother. The puppy's immune defenses are dependent on the antibodies that she passed on to him when suckling him for those first few times just after he was born. At between four and 12 weeks of age, the level of original antibodies from the mother begins to dip below the protective threshold. During this vital period, the puppy is vulnerable to infection and needs to be vaccinated. The vaccines are administered in several stages and booster visits are necessary. The puppy's digestive system undergoes significant development during the weaning period. He gradually becomes able to digest cereals, such as rice, corn and barley, but loses the ability to digest milk. The puppy has grown up. He can now live without his mother, but the separation of the pup and the bitch must take place at the right moment, neither too early nor too late. The ideal age for adoption is around 10 to 12 weeks old. This depends on the breed though, as a small dog grows more quickly than a large one. Generally speaking, you should avoid removing a puppy if he has just been weaned. Before the age of nine weeks, he's still not yet fully familiar with the language of his species. You should also avoid waiting too long. After four months, it can be very difficult for the dog to adapt to new surroundings, which differ from those that he's previously known. On the other hand, if the puppy has had plenty of opportunities to learn and to develop new contacts, there is no hurry to separate him from his mother. This is why, in certain circumstances, adopting an older puppy can help him to settle into his new environment more easily. The big day has finally arrived. The family can't wait to choose their new puppy. But among the hundreds of breeds and characters to select from, how do you make the right choice? They're all so cute and attractive. Choosing is no easy matter. Before buying or adopting a puppy, it's important to check that when the dog reaches adulthood, this faithful day-to-day -day companion will be able to adapt to his master's lifestyle and vice versa. When it comes to choosing your puppy, don't be in a hurry as you may make the wrong choice. It's better to sit down and ask yourself why you want the dog and then to read up on the behavior and needs of an adult dog of the breed you are interested in. Naturally, the dog's eventual size and weight are key factors. There's obviously an enormous difference between a little dog that you can pick up in your arms and a huge beast weighing more than 50 kilos. Will the dog have enough space to live life to the full and will his master have enough time to devote to him? Thought also needs to be given before choosing a male or a female. If the dog is to be used for canine sports, then obviously a male may appear the best choice. If you're looking for a dog with a strong character but you are not an experienced trainer, it's better to choose a female as bitches are generally less dominant and more docile. You also need to take into account the presence of any other dog or bitch already in the home. A dog's character is dependent on many factors. Even if it's possible to describe the major character traits of dogs from the same breed, two dogs from the same bloodline can be totally different depending on the conditions at birth and their early education. This is why it is important to know a little about the dog's early life. The breed is a vital criterion. 
Some breeds are independent, others hate to be left alone. There are dogs which adapt well to children, those who love running freely in the open air. On the other hand, you'll also find breeds that love peace and quiet and are perfect for life indoors. There are those that need regular grooming or rustic breeds which need less care. There are breeds which can eat vast quantities and those that peck at their food. There are short-haired or long-haired varieties. All of these differences will have a great impact on their master's free time and on his wallet. Looking after your dog should always be a pleasure and never a chore. Regardless of the breed, every dog is an individual with its own particular character. They can be sporty or affectionate, docile or dominant, calm or overflowing with energy. Making the right choice isn't easy and it's always a good idea to contact the clubs for the various breeds to find out as much as you can about the characteristics. When it comes to a puppy's personality, there are certain clues to look out for when studying the litter. A highly sociable puppy actively seeks contact with man. Get down on your knees. Is he keen to come up to you when you call him? Is he tempted to follow you if you move away? How does he behave when the breeder arrives? When you pick up a puppy, you should immediately have the impression that he trusts you. Is he in good health? A few simple signs can put you on the right track, such as a keen eye, a shiny coat, healthy skin and a flat stomach. The puppy should be alert and happy. Be sure to have a serious discussion with the person selling the dog. Is he in a hurry? This could be a bad sign. If he is conscientious, he'll take his time and ask a lot of questions about you as a future owner to be sure that he is sending the dog to a good home. He'll provide you with a wealth of information about how the dogs have been raised, their upkeep and their characteristics. So, have you made your choice? Are the dog's papers all in order? Have his vaccinations been carried out? Is he properly tattooed? You should leave with a certificate of sale and an up-to-date vaccination booklet. If it's a pedigree dog, the vendor will also supply you with a document confirming that you will shortly receive the birth certificate and, in many countries, the identification card in the National Canine Database. Where tattooing is concerned, this can be carried out in two ways either using ink inside the flap of the ear or around the groin, or else by painlessly inserting a microchip under the skin, which is readable using a special instrument. All that remains now is to choose a name for your new family member and to show him his new home. His name should be short and no more than two syllables. It should be catchy so that he can remember it easily. It's better to call your dog Blog rather than Baltimore. The only restriction is that the first letter of the name should correspond to the year in which the dog was born. In 2006, it's the letter B. A puppy is a little ball of pure tenderness. During his first months, every moment is special. Everything provides an excuse to play and an opportunity for discovery. The fun and joy shared between the puppy and his new family can clearly be seen. As the dog grows, a strong relationship develops, which will last on average between 10 and 15 years. For this to happen, mutual respect is very important. The arrival of the puppy in his new home is a great moment for everyone. He'll need a few days to adapt, to discover his new surroundings and its occupants. You need to reassure him and comfort him during this time. It's obviously very important to ensure that all of his needs are met but you should also lay down some very precise ground rules right from the start. As an example, if you allow the puppy to lie on the bed or on the lounge sofa, you'll find it very difficult or even impossible to stop him doing so later on. His master should decide where the puppy will sleep. He needs a little corner all of his own with a basket or a blanket. During his first months in the home, the puppy sleeps a great deal. You should avoid disturbing him when he's asleep. Remember, He's still only a baby. A 
among the first things that the puppy needs to be taught is cleanliness. You should take him out as often as possible after he has eaten or slept. If he still can't manage a whole night without soiling the floor, it's because he's not yet able to hold himself so long. No. Shh. No. You also need to find a separate area where he can eat. Here, you should place two dishes, one for his food and the other for his water. Stainless steel or glass bowls are recommended as these are easy to clean. The puppy should always have abundant clean water available to drink. His food should never be left out permanently for him though. The puppy needs three meals a day for the first six months followed by two meals a day until he stops growing. You should always give him his food at set times as this will prevent the puppy from getting anxious while waiting for his meal. You should feed him somewhere quiet, in a different room from that in which you yourselves eat and at different times. Leave his bowl out for around 10 minutes without disturbing him. If he hasn't eaten at the end of this period, take away the bowl and wait until the following meal. During your own meals, the puppy should be kept away. You should make it clear that you won't stand for any begging at the table. It is often believed that a dog can eat anything that its master can. This is simply not true. Humans are omnivores, whereas dogs are carnivores who have evolved to the stage that they can eat a diet which also contains some cereals and vegetables. His food intake should be adapted to his size, his age and his activity level. If your puppy doesn't have much of an appetite at the beginning, don't try and force him to eat. Above all, don't change his diet too quickly after his arrival. For a very young pup, the digestibility of his food is very important. The ingredients should be of excellent quality in order for the puppy to derive the maximum benefit from the food that he eats. Dogs can be gluttonous when they eat. They don't chew their food, they simply break it up and swallow it quickly. To slow down ingestion, it's always better to select dried dog food of a size and texture adapted to the size of the puppy. When he crunches it, the puppy eats more slowly, facilitating digestion while at the same time enabling his teeth to benefit from a light brushing, slowing the formation of tartar. It's never too early to be thinking about this, especially for dogs from small breeds which are very susceptible to dental problems. All too often, people tend to confuse a balanced diet with a varied diet. Just like an adult dog, a puppy can't always handle changes in foodstuffs, which can often lead to digestive problems. A dog is perfectly happy to eat the same food every day. Feeding him, though, is not enough. Living in harmony with your dog requires mutual respect. A puppy is not an object or a toy. He needs you to take care of him and devote time to him. He's an active creature who prefers long walks rather than being hurried out and hurried back again. A sociable animal, you need to give him contact with as many people as possible. A puppy's education plays a great part in his successful integration into his family environment and society as a whole. This should be based on a number of simple principles. You can avoid a fair number of conflicts by automatically adopting coherent behavior with your dog because even the nicest dog can become difficult to live with if he doesn't understand what's expected of him. Ensure that he knows his place right from the start. As his master, you must always remain dominant. When playing with him, the puppy must learn to respect you and must know that there are certain limits that should not be exceeded. If he gets angry, bites your hands, pulls your clothing or refuses to put the ball down after bringing it back to you, stop the game and walk away. Shouting at him will only excite the dog even more and encourage him to continue. For his part, the puppy must obey his master, teaching him to respond to his name, to avoid pulling on his leash or to do his business in the right place are all things that will take a little time. You need to be firm but fair, demanding but patient. 
When you come home, stay calm and avoid great shows of joy at seeing him again. This kind of behavior encourages the dog to be silly. He'll get overexcited when he knows it's almost time for you to come home and runs the risk of damaging items around him. The master's role is to be commanding and precise. This is not difficult as dogs naturally accept orders. You simply need to speak to him in a firm voice, to give him very simple instructions and to repeat them as often as possible. No is all you need to teach him to understand that he's done wrong and good when he does what's expected of him. To help him understand quickly when you call his name, you should ensure that his name is always used just before something the dog likes. It's important to reward him when he comes to you by encouraging him and stroking him. Telling him off can sometimes be beneficial, but only if you catch him in the act, otherwise it serves no purpose at all. The telling off should immediately end when the dog adopts a submissive posture, as this shows that he has understood. In the street, in the park, and often even in the forests, in all public areas, dogs must be kept on a lead or a harness. The puppy must get used to this from an early age and learn not to pull on the leash. You should begin walking him on his leash at home, ideally with short sessions repeated every day. If the puppy arrives in a home where other animals are already living, there's no cause for panic. Dogs of all sizes and all breeds generally get on well provided they have enough space. You should take great care not to show favoritism to the new arrival or the other animals may feel abandoned and left out. Between a cat and a dog, things are a little more complicated. When the dog first arrives, your cat will naturally be distrustful. It would doubtless stay up on top of the wardrobe for the time that it takes for it to decide that the puppy represents no danger for it. Don't try to hurry things. When it finally comes back down, the two will doubtless get along peacefully. For children, the arrival of a puppy is always a big thing. For 30 years now, psychologists have been studying the impact that the presence of a dog can have on children and teenagers. Their results are unanimous. The effect is 100% positive. When they need someone or something to talk to, or the warm presence of another living creature who's always on their side, the dog is always there for them. In this way, the dog can encourage children to be better able to express themselves. The puppy gives so much to those around it, in return, you should ensure that each and every day you give the dog everything he needs. A balanced diet, ongoing veterinary treatment and regular care will all help your puppy to become a healthy adult dog. Where health is concerned, your puppy is fragile and vulnerable to infectious disease. How can you protect the puppy against these illnesses, detect them and treat them? It's very simple, really. You just need to ensure that you keep to the vaccination calendar and be sure that you don't forget the boosters. Depending on the country and the region, a number of vaccines can be compulsory, such as vaccination against rabies. The best means of carrying out suitable preventive measures is to have the puppy monitored by a vet from a very early age. Building up an ongoing working relationship with a veterinary specialist makes it possible to avoid a number of problems. During the first six months, it is vital to worm the puppy at least once a month. Afterwards, you should have this treatment carried out at least once or twice a year, according to the advice given by the vet and to the dog's lifestyle. When it comes to hygiene, it just takes a little discipline and a few simple measures. The dog needs to learn to accept these very early on. Brushing the dog's coat is something that should be done regularly. 
Apart from the cosmetic aspects, it also provides an opportunity to check the health of your four-legged friend, to examine his coat, his skin, his nose, his claws and his paw pads. In addition to brushing, to get rid of dead hair and to give his coat an extra shine, you can also bathe your puppy from time to time. You should avoid doing this too often though, as when you apply soap to the dog, his coat loses its sebum, the oily substance which protects the animal from the cold and the rain. It's also very important to check the puppy's eyes, ears and teeth often and to clean them regularly. His first teeth will appear around the third week. Fifteen days later, the puppy will have 32 milk teeth, which will fall out between the third and the fifth month, when they are replaced by his final teeth. The size of the teeth increases considerably between the milk teething period and the final teething. For certain dogs, the teeth will literally double in size. This profound transformation has a great impact on the food intake to be provided for the puppy. You need to regularly monitor his teething and ensure that the size of his dried dog food corresponds to the size of his teeth. During teething, the dog's overall health often deteriorates slightly. When this happens, you'll see the dog's ears, which are normally pointed upwards, such as German Shepherd dogs, starting to flop over. Don't worry about this. In general, everything will return to normal in just a few weeks. There's nothing more beautiful and more satisfying than watching your puppy grow up in excellent health and seeing him increase his capacities day after day. It's vital for the master to be fully aware of the puppy's needs at the various stages in the growth process. The speed at which the puppy grows is dependent upon its breed. Small puppies grow a little more quickly than those of medium-sized breeds and much more quickly than very large pups. A puppy reaches adult size in around 8 to 10 months for a small dog, 12 months for a medium-sized dog or 15 to 18 months for a large dog, while 18 to 24 months are needed before a puppy from one of the giant breeds is fully grown. The age at which the dog reaches puberty also varies. For a bitch, the animal will generally first come into heat between the ages of 6 and 12 months, before full bodily development is complete. Male dogs are able to reproduce at around 7 months of age, in the case of a dog from a small breed, and at between 12 and 18 months for a large breed. Growth takes place in several phases, which involve changes in the animal's energy requirements in the construction of its skeleton and the development of its muscles. The puppy's future body shape, balance and health are all dependent on these growth phases being completed successfully, a process in which the animal's food intake plays a key role. During the first growth stage, between weaning and the appearance of the dog's final teeth, the puppy almost seems to grow before your very eyes. Its bone structure undergoes spectacular growth and the animal gains weight every day. To keep pace with his intense metabolic activity, the puppy needs twice as much energy as an adult dog of equal weight and a carefully adapted intake of phosphorus and calcium. Its food intake must naturally meet these nutritional requirements but should also prevent the dog from gaining weight too quickly. That's why the frequency of the puppy's meals and the quality of the foodstuffs are so important. Overloading its skeleton in the middle of its growth can lead to osteoarticular problems and too much food can bring about digestive problems. The puppy's second growth stage is a consolidation phase. The dog continues to grow, but much more slowly. While his bone structure finishes growing and solidifies, the animal continues to develop his muscles. He needs a little less energy, although his needs are still greater than those of an adult dog of the same weight. This is a delicate period for the puppy, whose weight should be constantly monitored. Any excess weight could have serious consequences. Above all, avoid giving him titbits or leftovers from your meals. What he needs right now are precisely measured food rations. Track your puppy's growth by monitoring changes in his weight over the weeks. This information is extremely useful for vets, 
enabling them to identify any possible excess weight. An excessively plump puppy is twice as likely to become an obese adult dog. To avoid any excesses, you should take care to keep to the required frequency and volume for your dog's meals, and to choose foods adapted to the puppy's age and size. A short walk is always a great means of guaranteeing your dog's health. Taking your dog out in the street, though, requires a responsible, community-minded attitude at all times. Most puppies are born in the country, but will live an urban life. Laws apply to people, but also concern dogs. In town, if a dog gets run over by a car when he's not on his lead, his owner is liable for any damage. And a dog who does his business anywhere and everywhere could soon land you with a fine. Cleanliness is a question of community spirit and habit. It's always a good idea to encourage him when he succeeds in going in the right place. Little by little, he'll develop the right habits. Until then, you should obviously pick up any dog mess to avoid spoiling the local environment or causing a nuisance to others. You should teach your dog good manners as early as possible. A well-educated dog can accompany his master in all kinds of circumstances. If you can't master your dog, or if you don't know how to train him, there are plenty of canine education clubs who will help you to train your dog properly. In the countryside, the puppy will be able to release all that pent-up energy and to discover a new environment. The puppy needs to be able to let off steam, to play, to walk and to take part in sports. You should never forget though, that although your pet has been domesticated and is now part of the family, he's still an animal and needs to be able to enjoy a range of varied activities. That said, too much strenuous effort could well do him more harm than good. You need to find the right balance. Take him out as often as possible, but without tiring him, and avoid making him jump, as he needs to take care of those young joints. When you get back from a walk, always inspect your dog carefully to remove any parasites, and check that no thorns have got into his ears or the pads of his feet. A swimming pool where children are playing can be a great temptation for a small puppy. But if he jumps in, he won't be able to pull himself back out again. If you're not able to keep a permanent eye on the pool, it's best to keep the dog away from it altogether. There are dangers around the home too. And in some cases, these come from sources you would never suspect. Indoors, household cleaning products or certain green plants can cause poisoning. Take care not to leave your medicines lying around, not forgetting certain foodstuffs such as chocolate, onions or salt, which can also be dangerous to your puppy. Outside, various garden plants, plant health products, weed killers, insecticides or venomous animals can all pose a risk. As everyone knows, trips and journeys help youngsters learn. For your dog to feel at ease when traveling, you should get him accustomed to accompanying you on a variety of means of transport. In the car, it's best to start off with short trips. To avoid the puppy getting sick, for example when you're on the way to your holiday destination, it's a good idea to give him a light meal 10 hours before you set off. A variety of accessories such as harnesses or nets are available to improve safety for the pup and for all of the passengers. A brief stop every two hours will do your dog a world of good. If the car is going to be parked up for a while though, take care to avoid dehydration and heat stroke, which can be fatal for a puppy. On the public transport system, a small puppy can generally travel with his master in a suitable bag. For larger dogs, it is recommended that you seek information from the transport companies before traveling. Whenever traveling, the puppy must conform to local laws concerning things such as his vaccination booklet, his tattooing or identification card, and possibly his certificate of good health. 
If travelling abroad with your dog, it's vital that you obtain the necessary information from the consulate for the country that you intend to visit. With a little discipline and methodology, anyone can give their puppy the very best chance of growing up fit and healthy. You can't help but feel a sense of wonder and satisfaction when watching a puppy gradually growing up, discovering life and settling into a family where it becomes the faithful companion of young and old alike. Taking care of your puppy at each of the key moments in his life takes time, love and a few good habits. That is such a small price to pay in return for the joy and vitality that a puppy always brings to those around him. Whether or not it's understood or shared, the affection that a puppy has for its master is truly limitless. Every glance, every caress and every second spent out walking with your dog is a special moment of happiness and friendship shared. You really need to have a puppy of your own to watch him grow old and to experience that unique joy of having him around in order to really be able to appreciate such an intense and intimate relationship. An intimacy which quite simply makes life richer and so much more enjoyable. In addition to the regular visits to your vet, here are a few tips to help keep your puppy in great shape. It's very important to ensure that the ear channel is kept unobstructed, clean and dry. The puppy's ears should be cleaned regularly using a suitable lotion. This is a simple task. All you need to do is gently insert the end of the spout in the ear channel, squirt in a small amount of lotion and gently massage the base of the ear for 30 seconds. His eyes should be sparkling and moist, and the mucous membrane should be pink. No tears or discharge should be visible in the lower corner of the eye. His eyes can be cleaned using an eye wash solution when this has been recommended beforehand by the vet. Eventually, dental plaque can lead to an inflammation of the dog's gums. This can be painful and may discourage the animal from eating. Brushing the puppy's teeth is vital in order to ensure optimal hygiene for his mouth. The earlier he becomes accustomed to this habit, the easier brushing will be. At the beginning of his growth cycle, the puppy doesn't yet have any premolar or molar teeth. These will grow during the fourth month of his life. His teeth should stay clean and white, while his gums should be pink. Here too, your vet will explain exactly what you need to do to prevent tartar from accumulating. Your puppy's coat is so soft and smooth, it's almost impossible to resist stroking him. This act of affection can also be a valuable form of beauty care for your pet. Nothing's better for your puppy's coat than daily brushing. Various types of brushes exist for each type of fur. For your own comfort, from the very first time you brush your dog, you should use a table to ensure that the puppy is at the same height as you. Regular grooming also provides an opportunity to check for anything hidden under the fur. Ticks, fleas, cuts, thorns and so on. After brushing, which takes the form of an excellent body massage, you can finish off by focusing on certain areas, like the neck, legs and lower stomach area, with the aid of a metal comb with teeth sufficiently wide to comb out the last fine hairs. If the puppy lives in the town, its coat should be regularly cleaned, as even frequent brushing isn't sufficient to remove pollution from motor vehicles. Choosing a special shampoo for dogs is vital in order to avoid damaging his coat's natural properties. Contact a specialist. Your dog breeder, the vet or a grooming specialist can all advise you as to the best product to use. If you clean your dog in the family bath, don't forget to use a rubber bath mat. Without this, the dog will constantly slip and slide and cleaning him will turn into an acrobatics competition. If you have a garden, during the summer a shower can be sufficient, 
wet the dog's fur, apply a shampoo, massage it in, rinse and repeat. Be sure to avoid getting any in his eyes and ears, as this will only encourage the dog to run away. Bathing makes it possible to clean certain parts of the dog's body for which no brushing however careful is possible. The frequency of the bathing sessions is obviously closely linked to your dog's condition and lifestyle. Careful rinsing and drying are two very important stages to ensure perfect hygiene. Heat stroke can be fatal for a puppy. The moment he shows any sign of getting sick, you should immediately lower his temperature by giving him a cold shower or bath. Caution. A puppy should not be fed in the same way as an adult dog. At the beginning of his growth cycle, the puppy's food intake should supply more energy. Compared to an adult, he needs twice as many calories for each kilogram of weight. A very young puppy's capacity to ingest large quantities of food is still limited at this stage. If you give him too much to eat, his digestive system may not be able to handle this and diarrhea will soon follow. It's better to select a foodstuff which is sufficiently concentrated when it comes to energy, in other words, rich in fats, providing all of the calories the dog needs in a limited ration volume. Those foodstuffs richest in fats are those containing the highest energy concentrations. Most vets recommend dry foods. Their nutritional balance is generally closer to the puppy's real needs. Dried dog food offers several advantages. Firstly, the form they take varies according to the puppy. Their size and texture are adapted to teething conditions, which differ from breed to breed. Additionally, their low moisture level makes it much easier to store and preserve the dog's food. An open bag can be kept for several weeks in a cool, well-ventilated area, which is well protected from humidity and light. Finally, dried foods are highly practical to use. Ensure that you carefully measure out the dog's daily ration to avoid him gaining weight too quickly, particularly in the case of a large dog. A chubby puppy is certainly cute, but excess weight at this stage could lead to the dog suffering from problems with his joints later in life. Controlling the puppy's growth is very important. By weighing him at least once a week, you can gradually track changes in his weight according to his age. You can weigh him on your bathroom scales by holding the puppy in your arms and then deducting your own weight. To estimate the adult weight of your puppy, you should base yourself on the standard weights for his breed. The pace at which the puppy grows varies according to the breed and this is why it is recommended that you base feeding on the rations recommended on the bag of puppy food in order to keep your dog at an optimal weight. Following the growth peak, which takes place between the ages of 3 and 5 months according to the breed, the pace of growth will gradually slow down, but the dog's energy requirement is still rising as his weight continues to increase. There's no point in carefully measuring out the puppy's food ration if the dog is being given snacks during his master's meals or by children. Discipline must be the rule, no snacking between meals. It is recommended that you do not add vitamin or mineral supplements to his ration of dried dog food. As an example, calcium shortages among puppies have become quite rare and are only found when the dog is fed a homemade diet based on meat containing very little calcium. On the other hand, the problem of excess calcium has become far more frequent. Do not give the dog any mineral supplements if a complete growth-promoting foodstuff already forms the basis of your dog's diet. You can seriously disturb the growth of his bone structure with only two or three tablespoons of calcium carbonate per day in addition to his complete meals. Dried dog food varieties offer complete and well-balanced food sources, carefully formulated to meet the nutritional needs of the dog at every stage of his life. When the dog has finished growing, at an age which varies from breed to breed, foods for adult dogs should replace the growth foods, gradually to help the dog get used to this change in diet. It's very important to introduce this change over several days. By mixing the two foods and increasing the proportion of the new food at the expense of the old one by a quarter each day.